as the nation prepares to honour the sacrifice made by our diggers in conflict, many returned soldiers still fight a daily battle, carrying emotional scars that often never heal. Michael Genovese looks at the Perth programs helping them win that war. After 12 years as a soldier, Dan Kavanagh has a lifetime of memories, but there's one that's replayed in his mind time and time again. Carnage, genocide is a kind of a polite word to put it to what we saw in there, it was absolutely horrific. In 1994, 800,000 people were slaughtered by their own government in a brutal civil war in Rwanda. Daniel's regiment, one of the first from Australia to hit the ground. Lots of uh, bodies, corpses, no effort to hide remains of humans or just leave, left them on the ground. At just 24, Daniel tried desperately to save an injured child in need of a blood transfusion, but the boy couldn't be saved. I actually watched him die and I carried guilt from that all the way through until I did my course and I felt guilty that maybe I could have done things quicker or got the blood quicker or helped him out quicker. Realistically, he probably wasn't in a good way but I carried that guilt for 20 plus years. A decade after retirement, Daniel was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. The debilitating illness affects 8.1% or one in 12 servicemen. That's almost twice the national average for men. The 47 year old has now undergone an intensive 10 week therapy program. We guys, we don't usually talk about these sort of things. So when it comes out in the open and it's one of the high level traumas, Men cry and they get the tissues out. We hand the tissues out to them and we support them. We have a maximum of 10 people in one program and we run about four to five programs a year. Based at Hollywood Hospital, veterans like Daniel learn to open up about their experiences during hundreds of hours of group therapy. Slumped in my chair and just felt relief that I no longer have to harbour this. I still think about it, but it does not affect me as much as it used to at all. On average, those that enrol in this specific program have greater symptoms of PTSD than the national average. Doctors say that isolation is one of the major issues with most former servicemen ending up retiring on the East Coast. For Daniel, this Anzac Day is different. Free from the weight of mental illness, he'll march in tomorrow morning's parade for the first time in 17 years. Talking about PTSD isn't the only thing that helps. Brad Kay, who served in Afghanistan, turned therapy into an art form. That's a military artist of World War II, sitting there drawing a battlefield. For me, I find it really calming, um, and I just go with the flow. Um, once I get into it, I'm, I'm, I'm into it. The Military Art Program Australia began in Perth 18 months ago. For veterans like Brad, getting lost in art focuses the mind and lessens the symptoms of PTSD. Almost 100 veterans have attended the tutorials and there's a push to expand the program nationally. The program is now supplying 1,000 art packs to Aussie troops deployed around the world. If we create tools to help them at the front end, then maybe we don't end up with as many people broken at the back end. Michael Genovese, Nine News.